played your last season here with the Redskins. It's kind of stunning to us, and it's been a slow burn, but the, the franchise has bottomed out to where it is right now. Um, maybe you could touch on that, your, your, your sort of your year here with the Redskins, and, and can you believe where they are as a franchise at this point? Well, it's not hard to, um, to understand why they are where they are right now. And I'm going to give you one little story about Jay Gruden, <clears throat> and this is what I want to start respect for Jay Gruden. Last game, Chicago Bears – of the regular season when I was there, you know, did my best to play hard. We were going into the playoffs, playing the Chicago Bears, winning the game, I almost tear my quad. Mm-hmm. So from what I hear from the, some of the guys on the sideline, he asked, who was that out there on the ground? He's like, oh, they're like, it's winter, coach. He's like, well, well, let, let's get them up so we can get this game over with. <laughs> Don't you ever. No, 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 really. That shows that you have no respect for your players. You know, guys is out there putting their bodies and, right. you know, you know, well-being on the line for you and for you to make that comment, and I know that you made it. It's the reason that you're fired. It's the reason that your players quit on you because you don't know how to be a people's person and how to coach and lead men. There's guys that know how to lead men, and there's guys that don't know how to lead men, and he should just be a coordinator. He's not a leader of men. Well, Who was your best coach during your career that was a true leader of men? Uh, Vic Fangio, Jim Harbaugh, um, you know, they, they, they really knew how to lead men and they really knew how to teach the game of football, right? You have the coaches in the Redskins facility like Perry Fuel and a lot of those guys, they don't know how to teach football. I know more about football than Perry Fuel and a lot of those defensive coordinators than Greg Minuski, Right. I know more about the game of football in the secondary and these different things. Like these guys are just friends of the coaches. You know, a lot of these coaches are just hiring their friends. They're not hiring the best teachers and giving people an opportunity to come in, teach the guys, teach them why you're teaching them what they're teaching them, and then let them go on and have success on the football field. If everybody just continue to hire their friends, the NFL is going to continue to suffer like this. It's going to continue to be a disparity between the great teams and the bad teams in the NFL. Joined by Dante Whitner, 49ers analyst for NBC Sports Bay Area, also played here for the Redskins. Did a lot of your teammates in that locker room feel the same way that you do, obviously, about Jay Gruden, that he wasn't a great leader? Because the you know report on him always is player-friendly, but obviously you did not. Yeah, but he was one of those guys that, you know, smile on your face and talk behind your back, and you can feel it. You know, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take you know, a spirit animal to understand that, right? And these guys have been playing for him for years. I was only there for a few months, but I was a lot older than these guys, so I can pick up on those things. And somebody taught me, a guy that taught me how to do that and taught me about Perry Fuel um, is Troy Vincent. Troy Vincent, when I was in Buffalo, he pulled me to the side and told me, listen, you see how Perry doesn't come in when we lose football games? And this was the, this was the defensive back coach in Washington when I was there. Right. And Troy Vincent came in and said, you see how uh, he doesn't come in and say anything to us when we lose, shake anybody's hand, check and see if we're all right. Watch when we win. So we go and win a game. This is for the Buffalo Bills. And here comes the field. Oh, guys. Oh, everything is great. Troy Vincent taught me that when I was a young, a young player in Buffalo, right, number eight pick overall. So once I ended my career and I got around those guys again, it doesn't really care about their players, I was able to witness it and let the players know. Talking to Dante Whitner, was part of the 2016 Redskins. Now, at that point, Greg Minuski was just a linebacker's coach. What were your impressions of Minuski? Not, not very positive, apparently. <laughs> yeah. Was he the linebacker's coach then or defensive line? He was outside linebacker's coach. You also had Kirk Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's pretty much defensive line. You know, a lot of these defensive lines, linemen, um, coaches, they know their position. They know how to teach defensive linemen to shoot a gap or run a scheme. They don't know how to tell linebackers to teach them the, the basics and the details and the intricacies of a linebacker position or put a, a, a detailed scheme together to go out and face a guy like Tom Brady or know how to disguise against a guy like Tom Brady. If you put Greg Minuski in a room and say, teach me how to disguise a cover three and make it look like a cover four and make Tom Brady believe it or show me a Tampa two – or that looks like a, a single high coverage and manipulate um, Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers, he would not be able to do that. 
he would not be able to do it. So how can you be a defensive coordinator if you don't know how to manipulate the best minds in the NFL? You can't be. How do you You're know get he doesn't know how to do that? I, I'm not questioning. I because just like they haven't been detail. doing it. Say when again? I watch the film, when I watch the film, yeah. when I watch their film, I watch all their games this year. Yeah. They, they're not doing it. The safeties aren't showing certain coverages. I can look at the film and tell exactly what coverage they're playing every time. Why is that? And I'm an outsider. Yeah. It's so vanilla. So you think is what these you're quarterbacks, saying. hold on. You think these quarterbacks that study this for a living for the last 40 years, 30 years, Tom Brady, can't just cut the film on and tell you exactly what coverage they use? Right. I'm sure. I'm sure we see Tony Romo see, doing guys, it every week on the broadcast. Exactly. Exactly. But Tony Romo, he's not fooling anybody either. All he's doing is going to the practices and taking the plays throughout the week and then going on TV like he's God. He's not doing anything special. <laughs> I'm a quarterback for the past how many years? And then I can go with uh, CBS, go to the practices, and I can look at it from the sideline, write a couple of notes down in my notebook, and then see a, a, a motion on what side of the field you're in, and then go on TV and speak it like, it's, like you're like the holiest guy in the world. You're not predicting anything. You're not fooling anybody. What about the personnel that you see when you watch all their games? Um, personnel, I think they have a lot of young receivers. I like McGlure. Mm-hmm. You know, and he's out of Ohio State. I have to root for him. But, but really, you know, he's the real deal. He's used to going up against NFL talent at Ohio State right. every day in practice, right? So that's why he's NFL ready. You know, nobody physical it. Nobody babied him. He had to go out there and actually work against those guys every day. And that's why when you get in the NFL, guys aren't on their P's and Q's like they are at Ohio State. They're easy to beat. You know, this league is going to be easy for him. Anybody else? He's seen it at the highest level. Anybody else jump um, out at you as decent or, you know, somebody to watch out for, or is that about it? Uh, I love um, 23. Quentin Dunbar. Um, Quentin Dunbar. Yeah. You know, he's the best corner on this league. He's the best defensive player on their team. Yeah. Bar none. I've seen him come up as a young guy, saw flashes. But consistently, now, you can't get open on him. He should be regarded as one of the top cornerbacks in the National Football League. What? And that's no lie. Um, as far as Josh Norman, yeah, uh, Josh Norman was never accountable. <clears throat> he always used to cry to the defensive backs coach, oh, P, oh, P, talking about Perry Fuel. You know, and Perry Fuel let him get away with a lot of things. Yeah. Perry Fuel didn't hold everybody to the accountability level. He would get on young guys and talk bad to young guys, but when it came to guys that he knew was making a lot of money for the team, they could do whatever they want, and he would still go out there and take up for them. And that's where accountability, accountability issues come in, right? Everybody has to be accountable. We don't care if you get paid $80 million, and we don't care if you get paid 250000 Everybody should be accountable on this football team. There was a time we were in quarters. The Jacksonville Jags, I mean, against the Carolina Panthers. And one of my high school teammates, Ted Ginn, was over there, right? And we playing quarters, which means I have number two vertical all the way to the goal line. Josh, you have number one vertical all the way to the goal line. If my number two doesn't go vertical and stops, I can help you. But don't depend on the help, Josh. It's what every coach tells you in the National Football League. So the number one route you get in that coverage is a post. They'll sit somebody down and get a post. Okay, I'm trying to get under it, Josh. Josh, this is your man. Josh looks at me like it's my fault. <laughs> oh, he does. Josh, you are that. a front runner. Don't do this for TV. You can go back and get it on the game. And I can tell you the exact coverage. Don't do this for TV, Josh. This is your man. That's an accountability issue. Mm. 